Warren Buffett, arguably America's most successful investor, famously said, there are only two rules to investing. Rule number one is never lose money. And rule number two is never forget rule number one. Like most successful investors, Warren Buffett thinks that the efficient market theory is absolute rubbish. Buffett has backed up his beliefs with a successful performance track record through Berkshire Hathaway, his publicly traded holding company. Uh, Warren has never fully explained his investment strategy, although it can be gleaned from his writings and explanations of holdings in the Berkshire Hathaway annual reports. But first off, Warren Buffett likes certain types of companies, and here are his stated criteria. Buffett really likes successful businesses. This seems obvious, but the vast majority of stocks have fundamentals that do not match that of most long-term successful businesses. An enterprise with poor inherent economics often remains that way. The stock of a mediocre business generally only treads water. He also prefers companies with consumer monopolies, selling products in which there is no effective competitor, either due to a patent or a brand name or similar intangibles that make that product unique. In addition, he prefers companies that are in businesses that are relatively easy to understand and analyze and, and that have the ability to adjust their prices for inflation. These are businesses that make products that wear out fast or are used up quickly and have brand name appeal that merchants must carry to attract customers. Uh, Apple is a good example of, uh, of that type of firm with a strong brand name and a demand by customers. As a result, consumers are willing to pay a premium price for Apple products. Other examples include leading media and TV companies, drug companies with patents, and popular brand names like McDonald's and Coca-Cola. These companies usually do well even during economic downturns and bear markets. People either need or want their products and will cut back in other areas of their life just so they can buy these brand names. Some of the other factors Warren Buffett likes are, one, a strong upward trend in earnings, two, conservative financing, three, a consistent high return on shareholders' equity, four, a high level of retained earnings, five, low levels of spending needed to maintain current operations, and six, a, a profitable use of retained earnings. Warren Buffett also favors holding the companies he invests in so long as they remain excellent, which for him means the, the company continues to consistently grow and has quality management that operates for the benefit of shareholders. One should sell if those circumstances change or if an alternative investment offers a better return. After Warren Buffett first identifies an excellent business, he then invests in a company only if the price is right. Buffett also looks for companies with strong and consistent earnings growth, uh, albeit at a reasonable price. This is usually reflected in a low price to earnings ratio. He likes really good managers, and he believes looking at a company's return on equity. If a company has a high return on equity, he believes that is a good me measure of a firm's top management. He believes management is vital for the long-term success of any investment. The investment strategy that Warren Buffett makes use of is what he calls, quote, folly and discipline, close quote. The discipline of the investor to identify excellent businesses and then wait for the folly of the market to drive down the value of these businesses to attractive levels. Most investors have little trouble understanding Buffett's broad investment philosophy. His approach encompasses many widely held, quote, value investment principles. Uh, however, its successful implementation is dependent upon the dedication of the investor to learn and follow these principles. Now, according to the American Association of Individual Investors, 
Buffett's stocks have fared better in terms of price performance over the years compared to the stock market as a whole. As an investor, Buffett looks for these key fundamental ratios and elements when choosing an investment. First, he looks for a low price to earnings ratio. This often indicates an undervalued stock. Secondly, a low price to book value ratio. This also often indicates an undervalued stock. Three, earnings per share growth shows that a company is continuing to grow its earnings. Four, strong return on equity. This is often an indicator of good management. And five, free cash flow generation, which shows a company is producing more cash flow than it needs to run its operations. Warren Buffett's approach to investing is to try to invest in the world's best companies at the lowest possible price. His ultimate goal is to manage risk in his investments so that there is always what he calls a, quote, margin of safety. Every investor has the same goal, to make money on their investments and not to sustain any significant losses in the process. We all agree with that. At Fairfax Global Markets, we have tried to combine Warren Buffett's value investing strategy with a very conservative risk management system to make sure that an investor's principal investment capital does not sustain any significant losses. Now, here's how it works. We now ask every investor just two questions. The first question is, what percentage of your investment capital can you just not afford to sustain any significant loss in your investments? The second question is, what percentage of your investment capital are you willing to take some larger calculated risk in order to achieve some growth and accept a higher amount of volatility? The first answer I usually get is, I can't afford to lose any of my money. Then after an investor thinks about it for a while, they say, well, maybe I could afford to have 15 or 20% in a stock portfolio with a little more risk. I usually find that most people after a period of time settle on 30 to 40% in the end, but it is a psychological process where they choose the percentage. It's not the investment manager or the financial planner recommending, say, a 60-40 stock bond portfolio for them, but them choosing the right percentage for themselves. The first portfolio is the Fairfax Global Permanent Portfolio Strategy. Again, for purely psychological reasons, we always create two portfolios for all of our clients. The first portfolio is created just for the money that an investor simply cannot afford to sustain any significant losses. When, when we find out what that percentage is, I put them into a portfolio strategy called the Fairfax Global Permanent Portfolio Strategy. The famous free market economist Harry Brown invented the permanent portfolio strategy in the late 1970s. We basically place 25% of the portfolio in stocks, 25% in short-term treasuries, 25% in long-term bonds, and 25% in gold and precious metals. This conservative investment strategy is designed to protect an investor's capital under any set of economic conditions. These non-correlated investment allocations are designed to work during bull and bear markets and in periods of inflation, deflation, and in periods of recession and depression. You know, in, in Greek mythology, the hydra is a serpent-like creature with numerous heads. Each time an opponent cuts off one of the heads, two new ones grow back. Harm is what it likes. The more harm it encounters, the stronger it becomes. I mean, let's face it, that there are so many things outside of our control that can negatively impact the stock market. There are politicians, Mother Nature, Middle East conflicts, crazy countries with dictators like 
Syria and North Korea, all of these can negatively affect global stock markets. And investors today need an investment strategy that is not only robust, but is one that is like the Hydra. You can't kill it. When you cut off its head, two heads come back, it comes back even stronger. And the permanent portfolio is a Hydra-like strategy. Each of the 25% allocations is designed to thrive in a different stock market environment. It is this Hydra strategy that is designed to lower volatility and provide some aspect of growth in all market environments. On top of all this at Fairfax Global Markets, we add an additional layer of risk management. When one of these four 25% asset classes de declines below its 200-day long-term moving average, that allocation, that 25% allocation, is moved to cash as a component of the Fairfax Global Markets active risk management strategy. During the almost 41 years of this back-tested performance, the permanent portfolio, using the 200-day moving average, has had a compounded annual average return of 9.38%, which is just slightly lower performance than if an investor stayed fully invested during all that time in the S&P 500 index, which returned just a slightly higher 9.93%. But the advantages of being invested in the permanent portfolio using the 200-day moving average over just being invested in the S&P 500 index is you would have had much lower beta, much lower risk, and the permanent portfolio using the 200-day moving average has only had one negative down year in 1990 when the strategy was down just 2.6%. The maximum drawdown during any period for the permanent portfolio using the 200-day moving average was 8.13% versus 50.95% drawdown for the S&P 500 index. Again, this is the kind of portfolio that lets investors sleep well at night and they haven't experienced the sharp bear market declines that drive most people crazy and often drive them right out of the stock market. Now, just as a matter of disclosure, I would like to make clear that the chart and performance above is an independent back test from December 31st, 1972 to June 30th, 2013 of the permanent portfolio strategy and does not present the actual returns of the Fairfax Global permanent portfolio strategy. Our track record does not go back to 1972. Please contact us at Fairfax Global Markets for information on our portfolios. The second portfolio we create for each client is our Fairfax Global Value Stock Strategy. This investment strategy is designed to tactically invest in undervalue value stocks with one, low price earnings ratios, two, high returns on equity, three, high free cash flow generation, and four, rising momentum. This value stock strategy takes more calculated risks and will have more volatility because of the stock market. But during bull markets, it should outperform. As you can see, for the one year from June 30th, 2012 to June 30th, 2013, this value stock strategy was up over the S&P 500 index, even after investment fees were deducted. This two portfolio strategy isn't really revolutionary. There isn't anything really new here. It's just a better way to manage an investor's expectations and help them over the psychological hurdles that almost all investors experience in difficult markets. The benefit of this two portfolio strategy is that investors can review their portfolios every month and see their Fairfax Global permanent port portfolio is hopefully growing a little every month and doesn't have any wild swings in value or volatility and yet they can also see their calculated risk portfolio, the Fairfax Global Value Stock Portfolio, 
and the investor understands this portfolio will have a little more volatility associated with the stock market, but it will also have more potential for higher growth and larger gains. Look, here is the bottom line. If you are not a day trader and you don't want to gamble your retirement savings away, and you're sick and tired of politicians wrecking our economy, Middle Eastern wars and upheavals and natural disasters like tsunamis and bear markets driving the stock markets up and down and up and down, then you need an investment strategy like I have outlined today. Always remember Warren Buffett's investment rule number one, don't lose money, and his rule number two, which is don't forget rule number one, this two-portfolio investment strategy was specifically designed for rule number one. If you invest in the permanent portfolio strategy, you should not sustain any significant losses to your investment capital ever again. In the end, there's no perfect investment strategy. If there were, everyone would use it. But it seems to me that if an investor can see every month that his core investments are safe and sound and that the rest is positioned for long-term growth, I believe that is the one sure way to create an investment and economic foundation that can pro provide wealth and a high quality of life for you as an investor and hopefully for your family. I'm Paul Dietrich of Fairfax Global Markets and I thank you for watching this seminar.